Hello, I'm Nyasavi, and I am here doing a relatively quick build video with the Magicka Nightblade in PvE content. So there are definitely a lot of different ways you can build a Magicka Nightblade in PvE. Uh, there are a lot that work for some people, a lot that don't work for some people, uh, and a lot that work very circumstantially. I don't do as much PvP as I used to, but I still like to maintain in the know and well equipped. So. First off, let's have a look at just the skills on our bar right now. We've got Soul Harvest, Debilitate, Inner Light, uh, Impale, Elemental Weapon. This can be replaced with Strife, uh, especially if you need more healing. Um, I typically use Elemental Weapon if I'm able to because it's cheaper, so it's easier on your sustain. Uh, and then we have Merciless Resolve, the Bread and Butter Burst skill. Uh, on our back bar, we've got Fiery Rage. I still have Fiery Blockade on. I will explain why in a bit. Um, Degen, because that's really fucking powerful now. Siphoning attacks, uh, harness magicka, and then this is the optional skill, quote unquote optional. Uh, depending on the content you're doing, you can go without running inner light. Um, I will often go without running inner light in favor of a bar setup that looks a lot like this. Um, let's try it like this. It's all about practicality to an extent. Um, if I'm doing like an end game trial, I tend to take sap essence off or and put inner light there. Or if we're doing something that has a lot of AOE damage and I'm just dying too much, then I will take sap essence off and I will put uh, a skill with evasion on, which we have as a night blade and it's really helpful. So that's a thing. Uh, but to maximize your damage, you do typically want to have uh, your your, your inner light skill on this bar. Uh, you could also put Meteor here. I just find Destra Ults is a lot more useful. I do enjoy using Meteor though, so I will say that. Uh, for potions, we use our typical Essence of Spell Power potions. Um, we are going to be getting, uh, uh, we are of course going to be getting the Spell Power buff from Degen, but at the same time, it's just best to have that 100% uptime in case you let something fall off especially because this also gives major prophecy. And as I just said, there are times where I don't have inner light on both my bars. This is also the same potions that I use for PVP because uh, mag blades and tripods don't always get to go together. So I want to kind of go over the difference between soul harvest and degen right now. I've done a little bit of testing with both of them and I'm honestly not sure which I think will perform better. Um, Salt Trap lasts, you know, 10 seconds, and this lasts 12. They do very similar amounts of damage, but I think Degen overall wins, um, not just in damage, but because you can... It, it's also a sustain skill. While active, your light and heavy attacks have a... Uh, against an, the enemy restore 100 Magicka. That's pretty helpful. Just, you know, that's a sustain thing, so that's great. Almost every Magicka build should probably be using this this patch. You know, rip diversity, but it's honestly not a bad skill and I don't mind using it. Uh, if we look also at the Mage's Guild passives, um, it's got a cost reduction, which is really nice. Uh, the duration is increased, which is why it's at uh, 12 seconds rather than 10. Um, this one is probably, actually these two in general, are the main reasons that you want degen over uh, Soul Trap. Might of the Guild. Casting a Mage's Guild ability grants you in power. That used to be a really powerful buff. Now it's just a good buff. Uh, increase the next damage of your or the damage of your next light attack by uh, 40%. So I will very frequently in VMA, I will hit someone with Degen and then I light attack them and they're almost dead. And Degen just finishes them off and I move on to the next op op opponent. So that's kind of helpful. Uh, Soul Harvest, or not Soul Harvest, Soul Trap will probably be used more by stand builds, uh, Sorks, maybe Wardens, uh, possibly Templars, but Magblades and most Magicka Dragon Knights will just be using Degen as they already have a bunch of powerful damage over time abilities in their kit. Uh, so yeah, although if you do want to use Soul Trap for whatever fucking reason, like RP value or whatever, go for it. You're only going to lose a little bit of damage. Uh, but if you do, I'd also get this ability here, uh, Soul Shatter. If your health drops below 20% while you have a uh, ability, a soul ability slotted, i.e. soul trap, um, then there will be a relatively small amount of damage, but it's AoE, so it's kind of nice. It can only happen every two minutes, though, so it's not great, but, you know, if you're trying to maximize your effectiveness. 
Um, as for gear, I switch between two things semi-frequently. Uh, we have good old Mother Sorrow. Let's charge that. Or not unlock. Let's charge that just because I'm going to forget. Uh, and then we have our Maelstrom's Inferno staff. So I did a lot of different testing. You know, I tried putting like Master Duster on the back bar, but... Honestly, that, that was like a, a joke. Although Destructive Tusk does do a lot more damage. I feel like they really over buffed this ability. Um, but it is like, it, it's a viable dot now. It's it's kind of weird. Not used to that. <laughs> um, so yeah, with our VMA Inferno Staff, that is the reason that we have Blockade of Fire still on our bar. Um, if we did not have a VMA Inferno Staff, I would actually most likely recommend you not use Blockade of Fire, but they also increase the duration, which makes it line up with other dots a lot better, which I feel like is really, really nice. I like that change. Um, so yeah, I'm totally okay with this skill. It still works pretty well. You also have to take into account that it has a 20% more damage boost from enemies who are burning and if your you know your staff is enchanted properly they will be burning semi-frequently uh let's just go over the gear again so we've got valken scoria here um there are other options so there is groftar uh which also requires you to be close but it tends to proc burning really frequently it also does more damage than falcon sometimes it, it's very rng based uh but groftar tends to proc more often um but it the thing that i really like about groftar is that it's one piece is max magica that increases your damage whereas valken is max health which you know increases your ability to not be one shot which is why i wear it but you know there is the opportunity cost of groftar so the other option is the very well-known Zans. Um, I use Zans for endgame fights when I know I'm going to be up close and I'm burning, when I am pursing, because everyone fucking uses Zans for pursing. Um, yeah, that's kind of the, the heavy hitter one. If you're using Zans, what you want to do is you want to try and line it up with your Soul Harvest. So when you use Soul Harvest, there is a damage buff like a, a damage increasing debuff on your enemy so that also increases the damage of zans as well as the fact that we're wearing master architect which even further increases the damage of zans so it's gonna do a lot of damage insert gif here um overall it's a relatively good setup master architect uh you probably are gonna want to get master architect rings but you don't have to um Mother's Sorrow stuff can be expensive, which is why I just have Mother's Sorrow on the body because I had Master Architect uh, already obtained. So I just bought some Mother's Sorrow body pieces and threw a staff on as well. Uh, I did have to transmute this one though because I had sharpened from a long time ago. So you want both of your staves to be infused. Uh, the front bar will be a flame enchantment and the back bar will be a Berserker enchantment, otherwise known as a weapon damage enchantment, which is, increases your weapon and spell damage by X amount for five seconds. Um, you can get that uptime pretty high with an infused enchantment, which is why we're doing it. All divines, um, if you're gonna use Groftar or even Zans, like my health is really low with Zans right now, so I have to put like four points in health so I don't go underneath 16K. That's kind of my threshold. I never like going underneath 16K. Um, so yeah, you could put a try enchant on your chest piece if you really want to. I don't see any harm in doing that, uh, because you're also gaining max magic as well as max health. Uh, it's like ha splitting an enchant in half, and then you get a little extra stamina to boot, which is helpful for blocking, dodging, etc. Uh, which you do have to do a bit in most forms of content that isn't just stack and burn. Uh, so yeah, there's that. All Divines, as I mentioned, I'm actually, this one is actually max health enchantment, which I find slightly amusing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's that. I highly recommend people use Valken in most cases, unless they feel like they can pull it off. There are times where I totally feel like I can pull it off. Um, 
but it is a bit of a risk. So now I would also like to talk about food and race. So right now I am playing a Dunmer uh, for two reasons. One, RP. That's when I used to do roleplay in this game, and I used to do a lot. This is the this is this was my character, Nyasa Vindothan. She was a dark elf. Very pretty looking dark elf. So that's part of why. But at the same time, we're getting an increase of max stats, which is important for both damage and sustain. Um, and the max stamina is nice for PvP, so I definitely don't mind because I do a lot of PvP. Flame resistance. This allows you to go with vampire. Um, and this is where I say, you can use vampire if you want to. I don't want to. And I think you won't want to after you do certain fights. But if you want to do it, you have that option, and the Dunmer Flame Resist will help you with that. And honestly, I'd keep yourself around stage two just so you have the extra regen, but not many of the other uh, negative effects. But this is, you know, the big reason why we play a Dunmer for a damage dealer is Ruination. Um, increased weapon and spell damage by 258. This increases your damage dealing potential a lot. Now, a Altmer has a similar passive, It's but it's just for spell damage. Um, they also have 2,000 max magicka flat, so that's pretty nice. Uh, their sustained buff doesn't really help you unless you're you know, doing PvP or doing something very stamina intensive as a magic user, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But if you want to do big dick damage, you're going to probably want to be a Dark Elf or a High Elf. However, I am also using Witch Mother's Potent Brew because as a Dark Elf, I can't really sustain a spammable rotation without doing a lot of heavy attacks while using blue food. Now, for those of you who don't know, purple food did get nerfed. Um, it's still good, but it's not nearly what it used to be. Like, my magic used to be at 40k and now it's at you know, 39.2. Uh, the health portion, my health used to be a little bit higher. Uh, used to be at like 17.7, .7, but now it's 17.3. It's not a huge hit, but when you're min-maxing stuff, you will notice it. So the quote-unquote best race for most Magicka DPS is a Breton. That's because Breton has, well, it's got some nice resistances, but that's not because of PV, like that, that's not a PVE thing. Um, it has a lot of max magicka and it has cost reduction as well as some regen. So that cost reduction in regen allows you to go with blue food, which will increase your magicka by quite a lot. So let's go over here and let's just make some blue food. Okay, I was having a little bit of trouble there with making food for some reason. I think it was one of my add-ons. Uh, I was having a conflict anyways. So now here we go. This is blue food. This is the type of food you're going to want to use. Um, it's going to increase your max health and your max magicka. There are other types of this food. Um, it used to be back before one Tamriel that each alliance had their own food. This is actually the EP food. I don't remember what the DC one is. And then the other is like Mistral, Mash, Bananas, something. Uh, so that's the AD one. But either way, they all do the same thing. So let's go ahead and eat that. Our health goes up by quite a lot and our max magic goes up to around 42k so that's what you can do if you're a breton and that will increase your damage by quite a bit now mind you you will lose out on some spell damage but your sustain will be better your max magicka will be better and max magicka does also increase uh your damage so when you think of it they kind of equal out um personally i like dunmer better especially because I think they look better, but Bretons are also a very good choice. Um, you can do Khajiit if you really want to. It's not the best choice, but it's not a bad one. They perform relatively well. Their sustain is meh. Their crit damage is high. Crit healing is high. Uh, if I was playing a healer, I'd probably go with a Khajiit because um, that extra stamina when you're trying to avoid crap as a healer is pretty helpful. And then the crit heals hitting harder is something very important, especially in PvP. Uh, it's not quite as important in PvE, but it's definitely a nice thing to have. Uh, I also just, you know, Breton, also really good healer. Uh, Magblade healing is a thing. It does work really well. So yeah, 
that's that. I would like to point out that when you try this build for yourself, um, a lot of people don't really realize they're doing something wrong when it comes to parsing. And they'll be like, oh, I only got 30k. Well, that's mainly because they don't use Ellie Drain. So I actually don't have the right thing here because I do PvP. You're going to want Crippling Grasp, not Debilitate. However, um, they do roughly the same amount of damage. However, I also just remembered that Cripple does a has an initial hit. So technically, you'll be doing more a, a lot more DPS than I thought you would. Uh, but the damage over time component is relatively the same. So I wouldn't worry about that one too much. You always want to have Ellie Drain on your target dummy. I self Ellie Drain all the time. Um, a lot of guilds will want you to do a 6 mil dummy test, but I don't hate myself and I value my time, so I just miss me with that shit. I don't do that. Um, I just do a 6 mil and I just parse myself. Um, it's nice when other people like support you with orbs and Ellie Drain on a 6 mil dummy, but I find you can get basically the same results on a 3 mil. Um, Typically, it's a little burstier, and yeah, you don't have to worry about sustain as much, but when you have a group behind you, do you even have to fucking worry about sustain anyways? No, not really. Um, so yeah, that's that. Those are the changes for Magicka Nightblade. Uh, do be sure to not use Blockade of Fire if you do not have a VMA Resto Staff, or not Resto, Destro Staff. If you have a VMA Destro Staff, definitely use blockade of fire because after this patch aoe is not going to be something that we all have easy access to as much anymore all of our aoe is going to go down in damage um so the fact that magicka can still use uh elemental blockade is pretty nice um i'm not sure about endless hail like i'm not sure how bad that was hit i haven't really played around with stamina dps that much but uh this is going to be valuable if you have a VMA Destro staff because light attacks already do so much of your damage. But then when you take into account the fact that, you know, we have CP here, which really enables our light attacks to do more damage by like 6%, which is not a lot. But then you take in the other stuff into account, like this one here, Butcher increases the damage done by 5% to enemies below 25% health. So that that's like 10% more light attack damage on an already inflated amount of light attack damage because Somerset um, combined with this flat number, your heavy and light attacks do this flat amount of additional damage. It's not a percentage. So that percentage then multiplies that. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's what you're going to want. You're going to want um, all of these, you know, enchantments on. Basically all Magicka. You can use a try enchant or a health enchant if you need to. Uh, your stats are going to want to look more or less like this. Uh, I will do a quick look over with CP, but you can always check out on, on Dots' website. Uh, you know, red CP is very much so personal preference and situational. A lot of my red CP is weird because I do PvP. Uh, sprinter, I put 10 into Sprinter because partially because I do PvP, but also because, um, you know, you run around a lot. Um, I'm going to skip over the Lover because you're going to want to pump into uh, as many into Arcanist as you can to be like the best healing or the best regen possible, but because I do PvP, I split that up a little. Uh, I put 45 into Mooncalf because I also value my stamina regen as well as my magicka regen, so there's only uh, 75 in Arcanist. Uh, the Shadow, don't put any in Befoul, that's just because of PvP. Shadow Ward, you're probably going to want to put some spare ones in there, uh, and Tumbling, you're going to want to put some spare CP in there too. Um, there will be jump points that you're going to want to look out for, and DotsGaming.com also has that. But if you want a in-depth rundown of the, not the best, but the more accepted best version of the PvE CP, then go down to Dots' website uh, because the written information will be there. And frankly, I find looking at a website is so much easier than pausing a video and trying copying it. So yeah, uh, but hey, if you're that type of person who likes to do both PvE and PvP, then uh, the CP setup is for you. Um, it's I, this is what I found to be like the best. So yeah. Uh, also, 
I even as a PvE player, there is one uh, thing that I would always make sure to have 31 in is Bastion. So 31 is the jump point for Bastion. Uh, Bastion's a pretty good skill or pretty good uh, passive. Increases your shield size. You know that that increases your ability to not get screwed. Um, but the reason I do like 31 here instead of maybe like 11 or 10 is because of these two passives right here. Field Physician. A lot of people do skip over this tree at times, but when you are working in a group, this reduces the damage you take by 15% when you're resurrecting another player. That is a lot. That's very helpful. You also look at Infusion. This is going to increase that players that you rezzed them. The resi is going to get their magic regen increased by almost 1,842 uh, for eight seconds. That's a lot of recovery. That's going to help them get up off their feet because when you die and you get rezzed by a battle res, uh, your resources are a lot lower. So that's something I would make sure to do if you feel like doing your own CP. Uh, try and make sure you get that. Um, yeah, I'll catch you all later. Bye.